Hey guys, we inevitable here again with uh, guide number two for this holiday weekend. We're looking at the range specialist Asmodan. That's right. The, I guess the Lord of Sin from Diablo 3 is here. And he's been tearing up the uh, heroes of the storm, the Nexus. He's free to play till this coming Tuesday. So definitely go ahead and get out there and play some. I, I know a lot of people have been complaining and a lot of headaches because he is free. He's a quite a tough guy to play against and we'll show off an a build, a build here for him that you can use to kind of he's kind of like a split pusher specialist kind of a siege hero not really a team fighter with what we're doing here uh, and a big shout out to Betty he uh, actually is where I got this I did not you know this isn't I can't take credit for this fully this is a uh, his build that he came up with that he has perfected that we've also seen I think symbiote used the same build in their matchup Oh, it was one of the Kings of the Storm. I forget exactly which match that was against, who it was against. Um, they used an Asmodan split push comp. I think it was Asmodan and Abathur. And uh, so for the gameplay, I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, if we're going to jump into game with him solo queue, or if I'm going to look at like an Asmodan Abathur combo and show off some things. Maybe we'll do two different videos. But uh, there's a lot of potential here. He's a great, great siege specialist um, that does a ton of damage two structures so without further ado let's you know you can check him out here he is he's got six legs walking around wobbling around he's a big dude almost looks like he's got a mouth here uh, his cue is like a long range kind of a basketball like you dunk people you will actually you can dunk people with this globe of annihilation mana cost 60 a cooldown of eight seconds you basically launch a long range orb and then it does area damage wherever it lands uh, it's 60 damage, level 1, plus 13 per level, 307 at level 20, and this is a long-range ability. Uh, his W is Summon a Demon Warrior. It's not exactly really a skill shot. You just kind of you summon a Demon Warrior with it. It's, you know, you can target it where you want, but uh, I wouldn't call it a skill shot. It's mana cost of 40, cooldown of 10 seconds, so slightly longer cooldown than the Q. And the Demon Warrior has 200 health, level 1, 30 per level, up to 770 health at level 20 while the uh, damage that it does is 20, level 1, 3 per level, up to 77 damage. They last for t 10 seconds, and they have you have two charges as an Asmodan. Two charges, it's a global cooldown of 10 seconds. So you can cast one, then after a second you can cast the second one, and then it's 10, you know, it would be 9, at that point it would be 9 seconds till you get another charge. E is where he does a ton of damage, his, his all shall burn ability. It's a cooldown of 6 seconds, but you channel. It's a channeled spell, and it does damage per second. Specifically, 60 damage per second at level 1, eight plus 8 per level, up to 212 damage at level 20. But that's the base damage. Uh, now, as you channel this, it grows to a maximum of 120 damage per second at level 1, with uh, a max of 424 damage per second. So if you can channel this kind of like... If you think of the the void rays that you had in StarCraft II way back, the channeled ability where they would they had the three tiers, they've been changed since, but they had the three tiers that would they would go up and do additional damage as long as they were channeling it. That is what Asmodan Asmodan does. Up so it starts it's either like 60 damage, but it can scale up to 120 at level one, and then at level 20 you're talking 212 base damage, scaling all the way up to 424 damage and that's per second with a 25 percent increase to structures so there's a lot of damage coming out of this guy his trait is general of hell it's cooldown of 30 seconds you summon a demon lieutenant a general i don't know why they call it a general of hell and then call it a lieutenant in the tooltip here uh, he assists minions mercenaries and summons so just uh let me actually pull up the little gra graph here i've got it's he marches with the target wherever you summon him Granting 15% increased damage, 50% oh 15% increased maximum health to all nearby friendly mi mercenaries, minions, and summons, and it has an unlimited cast range, so you can cast this on any lane, any part of the map, every 30 seconds. Really awesome spell. Uh, it makes playing against him hell. It's, you know, not not to put a pun on it, but it makes it hell to play against him. And <clears throat> then his heroics, he's got two demonic invasion and black pool. You can see Demonic Invasion has a mana cost of 100 and a cooldown of 100 seconds, while the Black Pool is only a mana of 60 with a cooldown of 20 seconds, and it has a, a charge. You have two charges, just like you have with the Demon Warrior, so you'll have two of these to start, and a global cooldown of 20 seconds. Um, 
Demonic Invasion, it causes a rain of demonic grunts that fall on a, you know, kind of a similar area to the globe of annihilation. So you have a circle where you call down this invasion, they rain down from the sky, causing damage. Uh, it's 20 damage per impact, up to 115 damage per impact at level 20. And each of the little, the grunts, the demonic grunts, do 20 damage at level 1, 58 damage at level 20, that's plus 2 per level. And they have a hit counter. So they take four hits to kill them. Regardless of damage, it's four hits. Um, these were notorious with the the Asmodan Tassadar bug uh, just a little longer than a week ago, almost two weeks now, where you could basically shield these with uh, Tassadar shield. The shield would stay, and the way it worked with the grunts is you had, instead of just giving them plus a certain amount of HP, it gave them plus so many hit counters, and then you could put down a healing ward, and it was ne nearly impossible to kill these things. Um, fortunately, that's been patched out. You can no longer shield these, but they do take four hits to kill for each one. Uh, so you can have an unlimited supply of these if they don't die. Um, I've seen a, a funny video like that where you had a huge army of them f facing off against another huge army. Uh, so the Blackpool, the other heroic, it uh, increases the ability damage by 75% of Asmodan's abilities his demons abilities and any nearby allied minions abilities uh, it's a little circle you put on the ground you stand on it, it lasts five seconds and of course as I said you have two charges here so uh, that's the basic abilities if we look at how he stacks up compared to other heroes um, he's got the most health in the game he's tied with Diablo and stitches at level one with 1060 hit points 260 per level giving him 6,000 also, again, tied with Diablo and Stitches at level 20, and one of the highest health regens in the game, just looking at it right here, 2.2, uh, base up to a 12.5 at level 20. Uh, is insane amount of... He's, he's a very tanky hero. You think of him as a specialist. He's not supposed to be so tanky, but he is a tank in that sense of the word and the amount of health that he has. His damage is only 34 per basic auto att basic attack uh, with 8 per level going up to 186 at level 20 so he's not a you know he's not gonna blow anybody away with his auto attacks but he's got a little bit there for for good measure um, and now what I want to do here we're seven and a half minutes in I want to jump into the actual the try mode to show off the the build that we're gonna do and show off his abilities and then as I've said previously with the Zeratul guide we're gonna do a gameplay video later on once I've fully recovered so you can check out his, he's got multiple skins here. This is the master skin. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll do the, the Asgaldan, the Asmodan skin. I don't know, what tint should we do? I don't know, the green one. What do you guys think? Let's do it. All right, so we'll go into try mode. I think I did this with Raynor, was it? One of the other heroes we jumped in. So let me know if you like this better than me just talking. If you prefer, I jump in and show off the talents this way. I, I feel like it gives a better view but it also does take a little bit more time, and I do want to keep these short. Ideally, I'm keeping these under 10 minutes, but it's been a little difficult to do that. So you've got Asmodan here. Uh, let's actually walk out and toggle the minions. This is the General of Hell I'm going to cast right now, right? So you can see how he walks around. Pretty cool looking guy. Casting General of Hell. And you can see all of these guys are all inspired, you could say, by that demonic, that, that General of Hell, that demonic lieutenant. And there's the 15% increased damage and a 15% increased maximum health. Now we'll use this Q, his Globe of Annihilation. It's a short cast time. Let's get the talents out of the way for the minute. You can see the area, and then you can see the damage. It's not a ton of damage. You're not going to blow anybody away, but you can get last minute kills as people are running away. It's a, a long cast. Just to show that off, if I want to cast on the fountain, I'm casting from that far away. And you can see it, it goes that far. Uh, the, dumb, the Demon Warrior, the W, you just sum them like that. You can see there's two charges. And then combined with the General of Hell, these guys <clears throat> make... Your pushing power is insane. Uh, then we do... We'll, now that we're pushing the towers, we'll show off the E, the All Shall Burn. I'll walk up to the tower. And there you can see the channel. It's going to eat through the mana. The mana really, really fast. Um... And so that's the basic how he, he goes. He's a huge tank, you can see. I've got as much many hit points as Arthas at this point in the game. And actually, well, throughout the game, as long as we're even in levels. Um, so let's talk the minions off. Refresh the forts. We'll go back. We'll mount up. He does have a mount. It's not like a... He doesn't ride a horse or anything, but he does mount, of course. Um, not like a Falstad who doesn't mount at all. 
So we're near healing. Let's go over the build. We're going to go with Healing Ward on level 1. Uh, this is just for that increased pushing power. This is going to help both you and your minions. So you can put that down, and all of a sudden you're healing everything. Um, now if we level up, we'll go up to level 4. And for this, we'll take Bound Minion. I've been tempted to take Gluttony before. It returns 15% of the damage dealt by the E to you as health. But the thing is, you can get... Now, it's a channeled ability, the Gluttony. The, I mean, the... Um, <clears throat> the all shall burn ability is channeled so you can be knocked out of it uh, and that's why I generally I go with bound minion what happens is when you use your trait the general of hell on a lane minion it permanently increases that minion's damage by 100% and its health by 300% so if you use this late game on a catapult remember you can cast it anywhere on the map you can cast this on mercenaries too of course but when you do that like on a catapult late game it's amazing you know it's, it's another form of promote in a big way and then, so that's the level 4. If we go ahead and level up to level 7, and we'll show all these off real quick in the lane once we've got them all, we're going to go with first aid. And this is for that pushing power. Remember, you're a split pusher. You're not going to be team fighting a lot. <clears throat> ideally, never. You would never team fight, ideally. And really, you're just going to be pushing down enemy forts while your team is fighting elsewhere on the map, going for objectives, distracting the enemy team. And you're knocking the fortifications down, winning, winning the game in the background. It's very frustrating to play against. So now we level up. And for the Heroic on level 10, let's go up to 10. We're going to take Demonic Invasion. So you rain them down. So you can see it's 70 damage per impact at level 10. Uh, it's, they deal 40 damage each, and they will die from four attacks. So we go with Demonic Invasion. And then on 13, we're going to take the March of Sin. This allows you, when you channel the E, the All Shall Burn originally, you cannot then move. You're stuck. You, you can't move and shoot at the same time. Uh, with March of Sin you'll actually be able to move at 75% of your move speed, which prevents you from being interrupted. It allows you to survive a little bit longer. You kind of think of yourself as a bomb that's kind of being, you know, you're hurling yourself at the enemy fortifications to take them down. You want to last as long as possible with the first aid and the healing ward and the march of sin. You want to last as long as you can to get as much siege damage as you can done to get those forts and those keeps and eventually the core. And now we go up to level 16, and this also adds into the ability to survive it's the blood for blood what happens is you'll activate to feel steal 15 percent of a target enemy's max health and slowest move speed by 30 percent for three seconds this goes nicely with that sustain ability of your healing ward and your first aid it gives you that extra health but it also slows down somebody that's trying to kill you and when you're moving with march of sin you know you can evade them a little bit easier so it all they all kind of there's like a nice synergy there that you get <clears throat> and it it really works well for that that combine that pushing power and now we go up to level 20 and here it's the resurgence of the storm until this is changed until this is nerfed you're going to go with the, the angel on your shoulder every 120 seconds you're revived after five seconds uh it dramatically shortens the uh death timers late game and so that's kind of like the idea is your life isn't as important as the damage that you're doing and so now we'll walk out here and we'll show you how strong this is just in a single lane right here not to mind that you could cast General of Hell on any lane on the map. And you're also generally going to be sp pushing, not pushing against another hero. But we toggle the minions on. And when they get out here, we're just going to go ahead. We're going to cast the D. We'll throw down some Ws. We'll throw down a Healing Ward. Not the best location, but we do throw that down. And then we're just going to go ahead. And with all of this combined might... Probably didn't even need the healing ward there. Now the Q does take a lot of damage, uh, a lot of mana, so you really don't want to use that as much. Uh, generally, you're going to save your mana for your your all shall burn. You can see I did just completely obliterate that tower, and you notice I am not using my heroic right now. I'm actually going to go ahead and save that for the fort. And now if we go in here. We don't need to even use Blood for Blood at this point. Now, it is a 2v1, so this isn't the best example, but it gives you a basic idea of how this works. Now we'll run in. You can see how we're moving. I'm not. I'm taking damage from the fort now, but look at the look at that. Look at my health, and look at the health of that. And I still have. I can always pop out and get first aid and Blood for Blood if I need it. the The amount of siege damage I'm doing here is just ridiculous. Okay, now. With that, I guess that knocked Arthas out. 
because I took the fort down. But you can imagine, just the, the I don't even have to use first aid or blood for blood. Now it's a two for one, this is a bot, and I do want to show what the heroic looks like real quick. So, we'll call down the demonic grunts. We'll use the general of hell, we'll cast the E on the gate. Drop a Q in here, throw it on this, and you can see they're starting to to die, but it's taking forever for these towers to kill the demonic grunts. And I'm not even really, you know, paying that much attention. I could have used my E a lot sooner in taking these towers down. I was auto attacking for quite a while. Looks like they are bugged out for some reason. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, pop in here, cast first aid, and then throw down the E. And this is just basically solo. I mean, no minions here really, no help from allies. Just me tanking the fort and using the all shall burn to take it down. You can see, and I'm moving, I don't really have to move in a case like this, but I could if I needed to. Uh, and you can see it's gone. Just like that. The fort's gone. I bring up some more warriors here, some demon warriors, and take down the fountain. And that is how Asmodee works. Briefly, we're going to go ahead and jump out. Now it's 16 minutes, so we're going to go ahead and jump out of this. And as I said later this weekend, I'll be doing an actual gameplay demo of Asmodee in an actual game against real people and uh, show off this build in, in in actual action, like against, like I said, in a versus matchup. Now, so it's Healing Ward, then Bound Minion, you go with First Aid, Demonic Invasion, March of Sin, Blood for Blood, and Resurgence of the Storm, and you are a split pusher siege specialist that goes out there and just knocks down enemy fortifications. You have to watch out for ganks from the enemy team, <clears throat> but you want to time your pushes right, you know, time them correctly, use General of Hell on the right lane, to get the maximum pushing potential for your team and knock down enemy fortifications when their team is out of position. You can, of course, once you get March of Sin team fight with the All Shall Burn, it does a lot of damage. Um, you're, you know, you're always there as a soak for your team if they need it, but ideally you're split pushing, knocking down the forts and the keeps in the core. All right, guys, thanks for watching this and uh, getting getting some more stuff to you this weekend.